What's going on you guys? Today we're talking about electrical current flow and voltage. Let's get into it. So first off, current flow. The reason I'm going over this is because I don't want to be corrected in the comments, but I do want you to understand um, how this came to be. So if you take a AA battery, or any battery for that matter, you're going to have two different sides or terminals. For a AA battery, you have one that has a little nipple on the end, and then you have a flat side. The flat side is negative, and the little nipple side is positive. So when they, were, uh, when they discovered electricity, they didn't know much about it and didn't really have a lot of resources to research into it. And they had assumed that electricity in a completed circuit, which we'll talk about circuits later, left the positive terminal, went through the circuit, and ended at the negative terminal. As time went on and they did more research, they learned that electricity actually flowed the opposite direction and it left the negative terminal and moved its way to the positive terminal. The two different types of directions, positive to negative, is called conventional flow. This is called conventional because that's what they thought it was. It was the convention of the time. And then as things uh, became easier to understand, they understood that it actually went the opposite direction, and that is the actual flow of the electrons that are producing the electricity, and that's why it's called electron flow. In schematics, they will be using the conventional flow because that's how it was a long time ago, and they didn't want to go back and change everything. So when I teach you these examples, just have that in mind, but every, the way everything is going to be wired is using the conventional flow method. Going on to, I guess you can say current flow again, we're going to talk about how electricity flows through a simple circuit. I have these two AA batteries, and they're in this little container. I'm gonna make a simple circuit for you. So now we have the AA power coming out of here. So, like I said, we're gonna be using the conventional method. So, electricity comes out of the positive end, and it has to make its way back through the negative end. But we can't just connect these two, otherwise we do what's called a short circuit, and that could heat up the battery and cause damage to the battery, possibly the wires, depending on how much electricity is going through it. What we have to do is we have to diminish the power that's going through this line by using what's known as a resistor or a load. This would be considered a load because it emits light, which is using some of that electricity. That way, when it goes back down, the black side, the electricity will be used and it won't overload the battery, it won't heat it up. So what we're going to do is hook this up, and this is low voltage so I can use my fingers, nothing's going to happen. So when we hook it up, you'll see that little LED lights up, I hope you can see that. And when we take it apart, it stops. This is showing the electricity flowing through the wires. Now if you look at it this way, you can see that there is a circle happening. So when I have the wires hooked up like this, it's coming out of the positive through the load and working its way down back to the power source. Without this complete circle, which is also known as a circuit, this would not work. It has to be a complete circuit. So notice how the LED is not working and when I hook it up the last final connection we get light. Don't get light, we get light. And that's how a switch works as well. A switch essentially what it does is it keeps one part of the circuit away from itself similar to this. They're not touching. And whenever you flick the switch to activate the circuit, it makes them touch, which activates either heated grips or a light or whatever you need to activate. And then when you flick the switch off, it breaks it like this, opens it apart. This is known as an open circuit. It's open because it opens up the circle. There's no longer a connection. There's no more path for the electricity to flow. And when it is like this, where electricity is flowing through a perfect circuit, this is known as a closed circuit. So closed circuit means it works, open circuit means it doesn't. And it's as simple as that. So electricity works a lot like water. I'm sure you're going to have, you would have heard that. 
a couple of times. So let's say we have a, a pump right here. It's just a big old water pump, okay? And right here, actually right here, we're going to put a kind of like a, a little dial to tell us how much pressure is coming out of that. So it's going to be able to take a little sample, tell us what the pressure is that's inside of that. And the water flow is going to be this way. <clears throat> so let's say it goes down, and right here it runs into a, let's say like a generator of some sort. So let's just say G for generator. And it's able to power like a light bulb or something. I know, I'm such an artist. <laughs> so, and let's say now, goes down, and we have another little thing to tell you the pressure coming out of that. And then, goes all the way back. So, Let's say right here, this is telling me that I have 12 PSI. And we have 12 PSI of pressure coming down here. The generator uses some of that pressure, and because this is what's, it's basically adding resistance to the circuit, as it comes through here, and we have another thing telling us the pressure, the pressure will be different from here because there is something in the way of the path using some of that energy. So the pressure will decrease. Let's say now it's going to be at, let's say, 3 PSI. It goes back to the source and then gets repressurized and pushed back out and the cycle continues. This is able to tap into that pressure and it's spinning, generating electricity for this light bulb to work. So this pump up here is going to represent the battery. So we'll just do B for battery, even though it's really badly drawn. This right here saying 12 PSI is going to represent like a multimeter, but we'll get into that later. And this is going, the generator or the whatever's going to be using the electricity is going to represent a light bulb or, a, or anything that uses electricity. So headlights or heated grips, examples I used earlier. This is a simplified version of what I drew earlier by my girlfriend Akasha and this is the exact same setup just without the multimeters really so like I said 12 psi directions going this way this is the pump this is the light that's using some of this power and we're going to consider this the battery so we'll put a B for a battery and going this direction is going to be positive so let's just say that this is the positive end and then this is going to be the negative end. As electricity flows this way, it's going to use, it's going to supply power to this light bulb, and that will drop the pressure, bringing it down to three. The 12 PSI and the three PSI, I put those there because that represents voltage. Voltage is basically, it's gonna come from the battery, and it is the pressure inside the battery that forces the electricity out and on its route. Whenever something uses some voltage, the voltage will drop. It will go from, let's say, 12 volts or 12 PSI, like this example shows, and once something taps into that power, it's going to add resistance, dropping the voltage down. So the, in essence, 12 volts down to 3 volts, and goes back, gets repressurized, pushed back out of the system. So exact same setup, but we're going to throw in a switch. So let's say there's a switch right here, and I wanted to close the circuit, stop the water from flowing, stop the light bulb. All I have to do is block the, the path that the water will take. This is the exact same thing that would happen in an electrical circuit. Instead of actually putting something in the path, which essentially you still are, you're going to break the circuit. You're going to pull it apart. So that way there's no way for it to travel. So if you set a switch in the way, stops everything. 
Once you open the path again and allow current to flow, everything starts to move and it will power the battery or power the light bulb. So that's pretty much it when it comes to voltage. Don't get me wrong, I still understand that there's a difference between AC and DC. The application for this was DC voltage because it's the simplest to understand. The differences, a video for the differences between the two will come later on. So stay tuned for that. And just so you see an example of a switch, you know, light on, light off. Same thing that we just did. It's just hardware. That's really all it is. But if uh, you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Uh, you can reach me down in the thing down there, or you can contact me through Facebook or Instagram. Let me know if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns. Please subscribe, and I will see you guys later.